And now we're ready to start um, sewing. So I finish all of my edges um, and I like to use a serger for that. You can also use a zigzag stitch. Um, the linens um, tend to fray out quite a bit. You can already see that this one is kind of starting to fray here, here even on a straight edge. So serging is really important for the longevity of your outfit or zigzag um, sewing. Some people like to hand finish, which is lovely. Um, I don't tend to <laughs> have the patience for that. So a few tips on serging. You are going to chain in and then chain out. And chaining is kind of the name they call it because um, you produce a little bit of a thread that looks like a chain where the loops are being knotted together when you are not sewing on fabric. And so with that, we're gonna start with the fabric out here. We're gonna let the presser foot catch it and send it through. Um, the presser foot, Right. Um, this does have a little bit of a walking foot. We're going to talk about the dynamics of presser feet and misaligning um, feeding of top and bottom fabric later on when we get to our inserting our sleeves and using that for good. Um, but with that, we're just going to chain in. And when I'm finishing the edges, I normally just catch the very edge here at the knife blade of the serger. Um, with this, because it is the um, selvage edge, I'm actually cutting that off. When I am serging, uh, it allows you to go really fast, which is awesome. But with that, you have to be aware of your tension of your fabric itself, especially as you get lots of big bulky fabric that can pull your fabric off of your machine. So I like to use a two-hand approach, one behind, one in front. And then when I'm feeding the fabric through, I'm looking here where the knife is going to be cutting where the edge of the serger is going to. But then I'm also really kind of looking a few inches in front and this is where I'm guiding my fabric to be. Because once it's passed here on a serger, it's almost a lost cause when you're going super fast. So you want to make sure it's lined up a little bit ahead of time. And then with that I'm going to be using two hands to move the fabric. I'm letting the machine itself pull the fabric, but I'm just providing a little bit extra support here. You also notice that I don't have any pins. I really don't like using a whole lot of pins, but what I do is I do something called finger pinning. And so what you can do is you can put your finger in between the two layers of the fabric that you're sewing, and then you come out a little bit of a ways and you hold that in place. And then you use this pinching technique. Make sure your fabric doesn't slide back and forth and around. And then when doing long seams like this, especially on the bias, I like to walk back quite a bit, line up my seam back here, pin it with my fingers here, and then I come up and I pin it again here with a pinch. And then that way, once I get to that closest pinch, I release it. I'm still pinched back here. but I'm able to sur uh, surge a really long amount without having to put pins in and out. And so again, I would come back here and I stand when I'm sewing. And so it allows me to move really far back to get these nice long lengths of finger pinning in place. So I'm gonna continue on and finish surging all my seams. Uh, quick correction, I'm gonna continue and finish surging all my edges, not the seams, those come later. Um, but when you're serging complex shapes like this one, this is one of the bodice pieces. Um, so this is the armhole here going down into the body. It's a little bit different. You do slow uh, sew a little bit slower, so you have more control. And you're also looking about right here or here to know where on the edge of the fabric you're going. You're also using both hands to maneuver the fabric through the machine. So a little bit of finger pressure to get make sure the fabric gets caught underneath that presser foot. And you can see that I'm using my hand to help guide this fabric through here, keeping it straight, keeping the tension right, and then moving on down to the edge. And we start again with the body. So, uh, yes, I am kneeling in front of my serger. <laughs> ah, um, so I ran out of thread on one of my cones and um, 
thankfully it only took three re-threadings to get this little lovely cobalt creature up and running again. Um, so lost some time on that and now I definitely will keep an eye out on my other cones a little bit uh, more closely and if it comes to it I'll show you how to re-thread a serger cone preemptively so you don't waste 30 minutes re-threading your serger. Mm -hmm. mm.